Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It is bright, it's beautiful, it's time to get into some Bitcoin underlying market dynamics. And as we are still caught in the four hour sandpaper range, I think it's a good time to go over some of the higher term time frame ideas and validation points and check in on the underlying market dynamics as a whole. Um, looking at the crypto sphere here, most of the altcoins getting a bit of a bounce here on the day. Solana up 7%, Matic up 6%, Aave up 3.9%, and Compound. So Compound and Aave also um, continuing to gear on up to the upside. <clears throat> And what else? Fear and Greed Index coming in at uh, slightly greedy at a 57. You've got open interest at 9.5 billion. So shaving off a few of the leverage positions. Funding rates did slip slightly negative. Uh, I think it was about a day ago on July 6th. And no, no, that was last week. And you will see the price actually went down that day. That, so you're paying to go short. And that was why we did not break the range to the downside. And you've got a slight tick up in the leverage ratio. That's it for underlying market dynamics, pretty inconsequential. And uh, <clears throat> so let's talk about the higher term timeframes because they are the most powerful timeframes. And what do we have here? Um, we went over this some time ago, but a bit of a cup and handle formation. And it looks like this, right? So you've got the up and the handle and the measure move off of a target like this is going to be from the bottom wick there uh coming in at what is that uh 16 four or sorry 15 four and that gives you a huge measure move up to 63,000 off of this cup and handle formation uh could you move it down slightly i think that's probably but I, I guess to be, you know, tried and true, uh, it's from the last weekly pivot on a candle body closing basis and measure move coming up to 62,000. So pretty good opportunity right there. Uh, if you look at a risk reward, reward basis, and what am I talking about? Well, um, when we saw the daily breakout of this falling channel, we had the measure move hit there. Immediately, I drew out our green box of peace and prosperity and death and despair. And why is that? Well, price action tends to get sucked into that 618 fib coming in right there, right along this uh, trend line here. And that's at 27,500. Uh, could we get a quick wick down there and bounce it? Well, if we did, um, here's how I would be looking to play this opportunity. Um, and I will use the long tool but let's say you could be so lucky as to get an entry around 27.4 right off the 618 well um i would put a stop loss right below the prior wick low on a weekly time frame pretty low risk and well if we want to take the measure move again off of something like that um, 61,000 is going to be right there coming in at that last pivot right there. I'd say that's probably fair enough for a hundred, 118% gainer. And I do believe we are going to get a pretty momentous move here in Bitcoin land in the very short term for a few reasons. I'm going to go over those in just a minute here, but as you can see, uh, nice, uh, you know, risk to reward ratio and, um, some of the technicals lining up alongside of uh, this cup and handle formation. And yep, that, that would uh, get you that move. Call it 61,000 and change. And um, that's the cup and handle on the weekly time frame. Now the Gaussian channel is the next thing we wanted to discuss, uh, giving us the bias going back uh, from previous part, you know, market cycles and action. And um, what is technical analysis? It's not an exact science. It's more of an art form. And, you know, the trend tends to repeat itself over time. The trend is your friend till the end of the trend. And I'll give you uh, 
And there's a saying that three times makes a trend, right? Three times makes a trend. And we've been tracking this Gaussian channel back, uh, back to 20, uh, 2012 when we had the first mean bear, the mean band break on the weekly time frame. Immediately we touched the top side of the band. Once breaking the top side of the band, well, Bitcoin goes for a pretty momentous move. The first move, uh, this one was 85% to the next high. Uh, this one, after breaking the mean ban, uh, immediately went on a 32% gainer, or you could perhaps call it a 100% gainer. Um, this one right here uh, immediately went on. So what do we have? 50%, no, 85%, 80%, 100%. And um, this one, we just, in fact, broke the mean ban on the weekly time frame. And if we were to get, let's say, 50%, which is less than the average or cumulative moves in the past prior market cycles. Well, I think you're in for a pretty good move um, to say the least based off the Gaussian channel. Um, what else do we have here on the five day time frame? If I take this off as well, uh, we have the infamous silver cross. Well, it's actually not only on the five day, which is a higher term time frame, but the weekly time frame uh, that is when the 21 exponential crosses the green 55 to the upside and you can see the cross to the downside well that got that move and this cross to the upside got another quite momentous move you know from what well, from the cross at eight thousand uh, dollars bitcoin ran you know immediately to sixty five thousand dollars not bad um additionally i wanted to bring up the daily time frame uh for a little bit further analysis as we've had a complete volatility reset 14 days of accumulation at the top side of the range what's most likely to happen well the trend is your friend let the trend be your friend now we have averted the daily downtrend we've got a daily uptrend a weekly uptrend and uh, well, trend continuation, higher highs and higher lows. So if we do get a potential higher low, 27.5 or 28.5, somewhere in that range, I consider it a major buying opportunity. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but just wanna make my thoughts on the market apparently clear. And what else do I wanna bring up? So daily volatility reset and the average move produced from a daily volatility expansion is about 20%, give or take a few points there, um, 20%. So if we get expansion to the upside, I think that's also going to line up, um, let's see, 20% from where we're at right now takes us only up to uh, 38,000. So probably gonna pull back from there first before, you know, taking another major leg up. Um, however, I'll caveat that with this. And 20% to the downside would take us all the way down to the bottom side of the channel. If we do break back into that channel or even just below the 618 on a daily time frame, it's gonna not bode well for Bitcoin in the short term. And needless to say, um, that being said, so we're talking about daily volatility expansion, 20% to the upside. Yeah, it would take us up to about 30. 5,000, let's see, sorry, 38,000. But from the green 55, which is the area that price action does like to get into, 36,000 if we do pull back first and then take a 20% move. Why am I comparing this? Well, you got the five day volatility expansion, expanding from the lowest level. I, I, I don't know if that's Bitcoin's history, definitely in CME's history. Um, but the five day volatility expansion can get you 40 to 50% over a 30 day period. Credit to Mr. Crown for that one. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, check out his channel. Uh, really good stuff. But uh, five day volatility expansion, we've got this on the board and the average move is about 40% from expansion. So 40% from there which is, yeah, gonna be coming in off the low. 40% takes us up to the last high, no. 40% gets us up to this wick right here, coming in at 34.3 and 50%. 
you know, 55%, I think we're going to get a bigger move. I think, I think, I think this move's going to be momentous. BlackRock's going to dump the truck. They're going to back the truck up, buy all the Bitcoin while everybody's sleeping out there. Most people still don't even know the value of Bitcoin, how it works. Um, so we have incredible opportunity on our hands. And if Bitcoin does mount an assault up at 61,000, well, you bet your lucky socks. Some of these stronger altcoins are going to outperform. I'm just naming a few. Um, excuse me while I get a little sip of this Celsius here, my healthy en energy drink. So I think that's it. We covered the daily, the four. And if you want to front run the decision for a bit of a correction, I do like to use the four hour time frame. Any kind of a four hour closure above or below that 31.4 or 29.4 pivot. And what you can sometimes see is a bit of a deviation. So you get a four hour closure above and then it comes right back down the bottom side of the range or vice versa. Same thing. So any kind of a deviation above the range or below the range. If we come back into the range, likely going to be a buying or selling opportunity in the short term. We got a few more days of consolidation in the range as what are most people CP lie on a Wednesday and the PP lie, the producer price index on Thursday. I imagine people have their eyes on that. That's what I'm looking for is the calendar. And so, yeah, you know, if inflation comes in hotter than expected, yeah, it's probably a good time to check in on Dixie, losing the green box of peace and prosperity or death and despair. And uh, in this case, we said below the box, peace and prosperity, above it, death and despair. Looks like we're, <laughs> looks like we're taking the bottom side route, but are we gonna bounce it first back into the box one more time? Um, I would imagine economic data comes out hotter than expected. Well, dollar probably rallies lower than expected. Then dollar goes down, Bitcoin goes up, stocks go up, gold goes up. So as we said on the weekly time frame, there was some hidden bearish divergence, giving us kind of the overall bias that uh, we're probably heading back, whoops, to the bottom side of the range. And when the dollar goes down, typically gonna be good for risk assets. So we've been following this trend line down the silver cost to the downside back to the bottom side of the range for Mr. Dixie. Also three month, you know, too early to tell, but printing a bit of bearish divergence. I imagine here one, no, nope. coming back from this high, you got three drives. Yeah, I would expect Dixie coming down to nine, 95 cents. So big leg down for Dixie and overall bias for, uh, you know, for Bitcoin to do more of the same, more of the same there. So let's check in on uh, some of the other underlying market dynamics. We've been talking about tether dominance here, um, perhaps taking a little leg down, down. We did, in fact, get a, a little bit of a spike down, not quite down to our trend line, but there's still more time for that. And these aren't going to be exact. So I'll move that down slightly, maybe one more spike down, down in tether dominance, altcoins and Bitcoin have a chance to rally there. That'll be good. Bitcoin dominance is still hanging in there at a 51%. So big consolidation on the hourly here. What is the daily saying on Bitcoin dominance? Um, oh, here we go. So we broke the massive consolidation range. Our first target is 54. We are making our way onwards and upwards at the moment. And where is Ethereum, the next big one on the board? Inverted head and shoulders, daily back above 1957. And I'm looking for uh, 2300 to get hit. Um, as long as we don't close any dailies back below 1816, um, that would be my target on Mr. Ethereum. Weekly on Ethereum did close kind of bearish there. Um, bit of an indecision or I don't know. I, I don't even know what you'd call that candle. I forgot the name, but not not bright and green. So uh, leaning towards the red side. Um, do I see anything else on Ethereum temporarily? Momentum is to the downside on the weekly. We'll cross back up above 1904 this week. The daily uh, momentum is 
down and uh, setting up for a good buy signal actually uh, off the green 55. So as long as we can kind of hold this region and maintain that daily uptrend, you've got higher highs and higher lows uh, short term on the daily time frame. Does look like to be confirmed and yeah, I would expect uh, one more stab up at least at the 618 for Mr. Ethereum. And that's coming in at 1917. Short term, probably gets a bounce. The one hour, yep. Also putting in a bit of a bounce there off that green 55. I'd expect one more run. Yeah, nine, you know, 1879. And invalidation, you know, closure hourly back below 1860. And I'm looking for a run back to the bottom side of the range at 1842. Again, that's kind of the pivot to hold on Mr. Ethereum. ETH Bitcoin also, you know, maintaining the downtrend, giving us the bias that, uh, you know, Bitcoin likely outperforms Ethereum in the short term. However, that will change around at some point. And we'll be looking for a break of this trend line on the daily time frame, specifically for that ETH party to start. Uh, why not take a look at render? Um, looking at a possible leg down on Mr. Render. And where does that get hit? Well, below 187, not looking good. And confirmation uh, daily back below 70, 179. And uh, I'm at least looking for a move into the green boxes. The first target, second target is going to be 115 on the weekly. Uh, that would be, I think, a little less likely uh, than not. And of course, you know, get a daily back above this pivot right here and i'm looking for a run at the high so back above 228 and 278 likely to get hit uh next up another hot one on the board here bch pulling back slightly after having a bit of a green candle yesterday um this one i think does want to correct first um uh, correcting first on the four hour lower highs lower lows potentially uh, momentum is to the downside at the moment. So maybe one more swipe of the range lows here and ultimately a drive into that box is completely okay. Uh, this one has had a, a massive rally to the upside and you can see the hourly trend got broken and led to some downside. It's okay to cool off the price a little bit before continuing onwards and upwards. Um, as we said, yeah, anywhere along the purple 200, probably gonna be a decent buying opportunity. Again, not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. Ave putting in a nice green girthy candle today, up at 72, coming into a trend line and uh, was suspect to pull back from there. Uh, the question is, are we gonna break this trend line or not? If we do break it, um, looking for a move back to the highs at 80 bucks, the weekly time frame. You know, probably putting in a few drives of hidden bullish divergence. Yep, price is going to make, uh, you know, lower lows and coming back from this low right here. Yeah, you clearly have one, two, three. And I'm probably looking for a move on this one up to 142. Only double from where we're at today. Uh, confirmation uh, back above 94. And yeah, that's probably gonna do it for me on the two week time frame on the weekly. Probably gonna pull back from this area first at the green 55 at 86, but overall this one's looking strong. Two day momentum is to the upside. Daily is gonna flip back up above 72.94. So today is the day for this one if we are gonna cross back up. Uh, I'd be hoping it would do so from here. Stacks, uh, the one associated with the ordinals, potentially putting a bounce off the purple 200 and uh, just needs to close really back above 69 cents. And I would expect a big bounce today. If this one can get back above 69 cents or just crossing momentum back to the upside here, um, above 62.65 is gonna look good for at least a bounce continuation play as you have the silver cross to the upside it is crossing to the downside to be fair today 
So it needs to bounce today on stacks. Uh, this one has been overall strong in the market, cooling off, broke the downtrend, and now she needs to bounce if she's gonna continue higher. Otherwise, you know, could come all the way back down, all the way back down to doggy town. All right, I think that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, pass a friend, make a comment. I'm happy to answer some questions. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.